Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my first foray into casting coreless skateboard wheels at home. I've got a new prototype mold system, and in this experiment, I'm also gonna be trying out a different style of 3D printing. So let's talk about that really quick before we jump in. There are a number of different 3D printing techniques, and so far on this channel, we've dealt exclusively with FDM, or Fusion Deposition Modeling. Simply put, FDM melts a plastic filament and then draws your part with the plastic layer by layer. It's an incredibly useful, versatile technique, but it can leave notable layer lines, and if you've seen my videos on casting cord wheels, you'll know that when it comes to printing molds, those layer lines can mean lots and lots of post-processing. This time around, I'm going to be using an SLA printer, which builds the part up with layer after layer of UV-cured resin. The two processes are really quite different, but the short version is SLA prints are much higher resolution with much, much smaller layer lines. If you're interested in learning more about the different printing methods, I'll have some links down below to more comprehensive videos. So, resin printed molds this time around. That's pretty exciting and should mean a lot less post-processing. So let's get the parts off the printer and start cleaning them up. The detail of the prints that come off the resin printer means even from the outset, I can start with a much higher grit sandpaper. And the resin itself also sands much, much more easily and smoothly than the plastics that I've been using to print my molds so far. For this experiment, I also thought to try out steel wool for some of my sanding. The idea is that the steel wool would conform better to the curves of the mold and give me a more even finish. And it seems to have worked. The jury's still out. I think I need a little bit more practice with this particular technique, but it seemed like it might have worked. Once the interior of my mold was cleaned up, I applied a generous amount of paste wax to all the surfaces that could come in contact with the urethane. And when the paste wax was dry, I got to buffing it. In addition to the sanding, this should help guarantee that the inside of my mold is smooth and free of scratches, which should help the part release better from the mold. Next up, I applied a mold release. I'm using petroleum jelly thinned with alcohol, but I would love any recommendations you all might have for mold release that works well with urethane. The petroleum jelly works okay, but it's messy and it's really hard to get smooth. Also, you can see here that I've got two sets of molds. The second set hasn't had any post-processing done to it because how cool would it be if we could use molds straight off the printer? So let's find out. It's totally worth the resin to run that experiment. Once the mold release is applied, it's time to mix up a batch of urethane. I'm using Specialty Resins Flexit 90. This urethane has a super fast pot life, only three minutes, but I found it to be very reliable and it worked well in the last set of wheels that I cast. For an experiment like this, I think it's valuable to go with a material that I feel like I can trust. I got my parts measured and mixed and then started pouring my mold, and here's how the new molds work. You fill the main cavity up to the top of the rolling surface of the wheel, to this little chamfered lip up here. Then you cap the mold and use these built-in pour funnels in the lid to fill the mold the rest of the way. Give it a little shake to help release any bubbles, and then move the molds over to the pressure pot to cure. I cure my urethane at about 45 psi to help eliminate bubbles. Once the resin is cured, you can pull the parts out of the pressure pot, and then you have to cut away any excess resin in the pour spout because that will lock the wheel into the mold. Once that's done, you can remove the lid. Really good though. The idea for the next step is that you can use the extra material from the pour spout to pull the wheel out of the mold. I got a shout out at Skate Wheel Maker on Instagram again here because I'm adapting his extraction method to my style of mold, so thanks for the advice, dude. It worked okay for me this go around, but I can think of a couple improvements I can make to the mold system to make this step a lot easier. Huh. Once the wheel is out, I used a razor to clean up any flashing in the pour spouts, and the wheel is done. It looks good, doesn't it? The unprocessed mold didn't work, by the way. <sighs> nope. Okay. Got one, though. 
and that's a bit of a bummer. But the post-processing on the resin molds was on a completely different level from the FDM printed molds that I've done in the past. The older molds took hours of sanding and needed a good amount of paste wax to fill in all the voids and scratches. It was really irritating, tedious work. This mold was post-processed in probably an hour total, and that includes waxing and buffing, and that just feels like a huge improvement process-wise. Now, this mold is a prototype, and there are a lot of improvements that I want to implement before I release the open source version so that you guys can get your hands on it and make your own, but that is coming. Additionally, this wheel is teeny tiny. It's 48 millimeters because I have got literally the smallest resin printer on the market, and this was the biggest diameter mold I could manage to get with that printer. So I guess I'm going to have to get a bigger resin printer, and I also think one of those new 4K screens would really help reduce the amount of post-processing once more, just because it would be high resolution. So if you all have any recommendations for some mid-size, high-res resin 3D printers, leave them down in the comments below. In the meantime, I'm going to be moving back over to FDM printing and experimenting with one of the other post-processing techniques that you guys have been recommending, ABS filament and vapor smoothing. I got a really big FDM printer, so I should be able to make whatever size wheel I want. So let me know what style wheel you guys would like to see me design for this next iteration. We're going coreless again, which means we're probably looking for a traditional street, pool, or freestyle wheel, something pretty hard, 90A or above. So if you have a kind of wheel that you'd like to see me make that fits that description, leave it down below and maybe I'll make the wheel that you want to see. I want to tell you all that I am so excited about how this experiment went. I mean, just look at that bearing seat. That looks so legit. And the open cavity of the new mold system is gonna allow for so many awesome artistic resin pours. Just like the squish molds for the bushings, I'll be able to do multicolors, I'll be able to do swirls, I'll be able to do layering, all kinds of wild stuff. And the fact that it's a two-part mold instead of a three-part mold makes things a lot easier too. I'm considering going back and redesigning the cord wheel molds so that they're more in this style just for ease of use. So, not a finished product yet, but one heck of an encouraging iteration. I am stoked about where we can go from here. I see a shelf full of molds and all kinds of wild custom wheels on the horizon. And if you're interested in that future, you should go ahead and subscribe because there are all kinds of awesome DIY board sport projects coming up here on the channel. I gotta shout out my supporters over on Patreon. I wouldn't be able to afford things like resin printers or ASA filament without your help, so thank you guys so much. If you guys like what I do here and can afford to chip in, keeping me flush with materials is the easiest way to make sure that I can keep making awesome projects to share with all of you. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below, especially if you have recommendations for resin printers or urethane mold releases. And as always, thanks so much for coming through. I love having you guys along for the ride. And until next time, I'll see you soon. <sighs> Quick update for those who are interested. Um, the snowboard rebuild is going smoothly. I'm hoping that I can have that up in the next week or two. If nothing goes wrong, if I don't have any failures or make any mistakes, that should be doable. So I'm working double time, trying to get that back up and ready for you. I'm hoping we can get this board built and get out on the snow.